Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this special uh, style snack today. This week, we are doing a style snack each day to discuss the classic style twists one a day and um, kind of talk through what they are, what they mean, how to achieve that look, and answer your questions because at the end, I have an exciting announcement. You're gonna love it and you don't wanna miss it. Today, I am talking about minimal classic style. We've been talking about um, developing your signature style and what that means the last few weeks. And we talked about, um, scroll too far, sorry. What a signature style even is. What, uh, what's the purpose of it? Why would you even want a signature style? We talked about some of the signature styles of a few celebrities and broke those down into what are actually uniforms. I know, don't run away. There's nothing wrong with the uniform if you understand it. We talked about how to create a signature classic look and uh, how classic style is defined, and we're going to talk about that here, but it can show up in endless variations. It doesn't look the same on every person. And these classic style twists are all about putting your own twist on classic style. So it starts with minimal classic. That is the foundation of classic style. And we're going to talk about what that means today. So, you know, minimal classic style is chic, it's timeless, and it's the most sought after style in the fashion world when the details are right. It's what the French style aesthetic is based on. It's what the couture world is based on. And when you look at the runways, they runway <laughs> runways are meant to be art so it's very much hyperbole in fashion form um, but the foundation of it is still very classic i cannot tell you how many times i mean really any time i leave the house someone will say why are you so dressed up and i, I look down at my outfit and i'll say i'm not dressed up i'm i'm wearing a, a a sweater and a pair of jeans. Jeans. <laughs> That's what I have on today. And we talked about uh, uniforms last week, a sweater and a pair of jeans and a pair of boots. That is my, my winter uniform. It's what I wear almost every day. And anytime I leave the house, someone says, why are you so dressed up? And I say, I'm not dressed up. And they'll say, no, no, it's, it's not the same. You look really dressed up. Are you going somewhere? not going anywhere. I'm, I mean, I came here to drop off my kids or do a grocery pickup. I carpool. And in the summer, I swap out those jeans for shorts. And then I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt and I still get accused of being dressed up. And why do I get this question all the time? It's because of my minimal classic style. And if you wear minimal classic style, I would wager you get the same question. You've seen this woman before, this minimal classic style woman. She's sophisticated. She's serious. She's effective at what she does. She's hard to get to know. And she always looks dressed up with somewhere to go, even in jeans and a t-shirt. And her minimal classic style reflects everything about her. I have written about five classic style twists. They are not the only ones. They are just the five that I've written about. Each one of them was inspired by someone in my life, a woman that I know. And um, on Wednesday, I'll tell you how this series got started. But I've covered, um, I've written about cute classic, edgy classic, minimal classic, uh, soft classic and sporty classic. You could be boho classic. You could be preppy classic. I mean, there's just so many 
variations, quirky classic. I mean, there's so many different ones out there. And I am going to be talking to you about each one of the five that I've written about this week to help you get a better understanding of what these are and what they mean. So what does minimal style say about you? If you're a minimal classic woman, you're pretty fuss free. Your classic style is universally appealing, but not overly embellished. And your clothes are as tailored as your preferences. Because your look is so timeless, you have pieces in your wardrobe from decades ago, and no one would ever guess it. As an analytical thinker, your wardrobe reflects your serious side. And like I said, people often ask why you're so dressed up, even when you're dressed casually. Your love of order means you have, well, you either have or wish you had a compact, coordinated, minimalist style. And it's valuable to you in your lifestyle. For you, a capsule wardrobe isn't a new concept. It's just what you do. And your keywords are clean and bold. If you want your outfit to say minimal style, it's the details that will tell the story. So look for quality fabrications and fabrics and construction, solid colors, tailored lines, neutral colors. Like we talked about before, most of your wardrobe will be made up of wardrobe staples, modest cuts, some bold color thrown in, timeless pieces. You may prefer monochromatic or a high contrast color palette because you tend to be all or nothing, one or the other. And you may love neutrals with a pop of color. And for some people that sounds a little boring, but the truth is you actually don't care because boring is sometimes your favorite. And for those who hear the siren call of classic style, they'd sum it up in two words, practically perfect. And if you can hear it too, just keep listening and I'll tell you how to make it perfect for you. So let's talk about the classic details in your clothes. Quality fabrics and constructions and construction really matter to you because you love to buy and keep items for years. You may be a perfectionist and a critical thinker and you'll be uncomfortable in a top that has stripes that don't line up at the seams. You don't tolerate crooked seams or items that fall apart after a few washes or just one season. You are a precision person. And if your clothes don't have that precision as well, not only does it make you crazy, it sends the wrong message about who you are. You do not have um, a lot of time to spend on shopping because you value your own time and having to replace poor quality items on a regular basis is frustrating to you. And you also value the time and expertise that goes into a job well done. So this means you're more likely to choose investment pieces that will last for years and that will stand the test of time style wise. And that is part of what goes into your minimal style. What others would call limited, you call selective, efficient, high quality, and you are willing to pay full price for the perfect item. If for no other reason, that means you can stop looking and you can go on with other things that you would rather be doing. <clears throat> Solid colors are easy to mix and match. They provide a streamlined look and they can be repeated often without drawing attention to your selective wardrobe. Wearing solid colors also limits the stimulation in your environment. And as I always say about myself, when I cannot control the chaos going on around me, I can control the chaos on my body. And I do that by limiting the colors and the pattern. I'll go for neutrals and solids. And that is a hallmark of minimal classic style. You prefer tailored clothing lines. It's actually more than a preference. It's a need. 
And to pull off the minimal classic style look, fit is everything. It is your number one accessory. Otherwise, you'll look and feel sloppy and boring. And to be honest, the, the neutral color palette that Minimal Classics are so drawn to and the tailoring is what makes us look so dressed up, even when we're wearing just a t-shirt and jeans or a t-shirt and shorts. Taking the time to go to the tailor and make each piece look like it was custom made for you is worth every penny, hands down. Having to secure your clothes when you move is distracting and uncomfortable. Once you put your clothes on, you don't want to think about them again or have them draw your attention. Anything that distracts you in that way is too high maintenance. And that's also your definition of comfort. It doesn't draw your attention. Neutral colors are home base for you, especially black and navy, which feel perfect for any situation. I love to wear all black even in the summer. And sometimes people be like, that's depressing. Why are you wearing all black? It's summer. Um, because I like it. I'm not depressed. I just like black. White um, denim and, and camel cognac, those new gray, those neutral colors really can feel perfect for you. No one loves an all black look like classic style woman, a minimal classic. Most of your minimal style consists of what many would call wardrobe staples, those foundational basic pieces that we talk about so much, like a white tee, dark wash jeans, pencil skirts, button up blouses, blazers, a denim jacket, trench coats, ballet flats, a black purse, a black jacket, black everything actually. <laughs> And when you're buying a basic item, especially an investment piece, you tend to avoid trendy details that will date that item in a year or two. And you usually choose a neutral color because it will go with everything. And that adds to the timelessness. You many times don't care much about the latest trends. You may incorporate some that happen to go along with what you like, but you're not a trend chaser. You buy what flatters you, you buy what makes you feel stunning and what leaves you feeling confident and comfortable. You know the difference between classic and trendy clothing items. You probably have items in your closet from last decade that are just as stylish now as they were then. And they are in impeccable condition because you chose a quality item and you take excellent care of your belongings. So if these are starting to uh, resonate with you, if you're like, oh my gosh, that's me, that's me. I want to hear about it. Tell me in the comments because um, hearing a description like this can just feel like coming home and it can just be so validating, especially in a style that, like I said, some would call boring. It's only boring because it's not right for them and that's okay. It doesn't have to be right for them. And it's okay that it's right for you. You tend to prefer modest cuts in clothing and it doesn't actually have to do with your personal beliefs, but more a tendency to not be flashy and showing a lot of skin can be flashy. If you do cho choose an item that shows more skin, you'll pair it with items that offer more coverage or have maybe a little bit looser fit not overly loose, but maybe not quite as tailored. <clears throat> For example, if you wear a spaghetti strap tank with a low cut, <clears throat> you likely won't pair it with a mini skirt because that would draw too much attention and that makes you feel uncomfortable. You may or may not love wearing black, um, but we cannot ignore the fact that it's fashion's favorite shade and it never goes out of style it does tend to be the foundation of a minimal classic wardrobe. If yours isn't black, it might be navy, uh, gray, tan, that whole camel cognac color family, or white. When you do wear color, it's bold and high contrast, and it tends to come in small doses as a pop of color, like a bold lip, a colorful bag or shoe, maybe a cardigan or sweater paired with an otherwise neutral outfit. 
If you did an inventory of your closet, your favorite pants are probably navy or black or dark wash denim, jeans or trousers with an excellent fit that are comfortable but structured, easy to care for and classic in style. Most of your tops are tailored, structured. They skim your body shape, but they're not so tight that we know if you have an innie or an outie belly button. If it's a t-shirt, it's a fairly substantial fabric that holds its shape. Nothing floppy, drapey, flimsy, or in any way sloppy looking. And if it has a collar, that collar needs to stand up on its own and not lay down and take a nap. Preferred jackets tend to be blazers, classic leather jackets, trenches, um, denim jackets, your classic car coat. Your favorite pattern is actually solids. But if you do wear an actual pattern, your top choices are likely to be stripes, window pane, or a large plaid with only two colors in it. If you're feeling really crazy, you might go for a large hound's tooth, but you really probably prefer small doses of pattern. You're less likely to mix patterns and you may go longer periods of time wearing solids before you reach for another pattern, especially if it was in a large dose and it had color in it. Dressy clothes and formal looks are your favorites and your casual look is always perceived as dressier because of the largely neutral color palette, the quality, the structure, and the tailored fit of your clothes. The best fabrics for you will be natural fabrics that are structured and hold their shape. Their posture will be as excellent as your posture. Think about things like broadcloth cotton, not the really um, thin, light, floppy cottons. I mean the the thicker cottons. Linen, though the wrinkles may drive you batty, that's one of those love-hate items. You love it when it's perfectly pressed and you're standing up and you haven't breathed on it. <laughs> it hasn't wrinkled, but then once you sit down and get those creases in your lap, you're really annoyed. Uh, denim, chambray, wool, cashmere, dupioni silk, leather. When you go for knits, you love a thicker, a uh, more substantial version like a ponte knit because they're structured and they hold their shape a little better. You may not like layers because they feel fussy, excessive, and restrictive. Did your mom have to fight you to wear a coat as a kid? Do you shiver instead of adding a jacket? Does the idea of layering a sweater over another shirt feel smothering? Like if you can get the perfect, if you can get them to lay perfectly, you might be totally content. And if you can't, you just can't, you don't want to fuss with lining them up like that a lot of times. So let's talk about your accessories. Simple accessories are your staples, if you accessorize at all. For some minimal classic style women, any accessories can feel too fussy. But for those who do wear them, you're more likely to choose smaller stud earrings maybe a delicate chain necklace, and probably no bracelets, unless you can find one that stays put on your arm. Instead of a bracelet, you may prefer a watch that can be fitted to your wrist so it doesn't move. Because the process of taking them on and off every day feels fussy, simple accessories that you can sleep, shower, swim, and run around in um, <clears throat> may be preferable. If you're married, you may even favor a plain, thin wedding band rather than anything that's overly um, bulky or ornate. Diamond stud earrings, a delicate chain with a small pendant that has significant meaning, a plain anniversary band, and a watch are excellent everyday choices for you because you can actually sleep in most of those, assuming your watch is waterproof. The idea of a signature piece of jewelry is very appealing to you. Shiny metals, nothing dull, etched, hammered, or dingy are your favorites. And you love sunglasses because they make you feel invisible and able to observe the world around you without having to make eye contact with anyone <laughs> or acknowledge anyone. You feel like no one can see you. 
it's like a toddler who closes their eyes and they think that if you can't see, if they can't see you, you can't see them. That is how we feel in sunglasses. I just put on an invisibility cloak and I feel so much better right now. For purses, you gravitate toward black, shiny leather with minimal embellishment, structured shapes. They hold their shape when empty and they stand up on their own. A great bag is something you're often willing to invest in if you can afford it because it will go with everything. It will always be stylish and it will last you forever, particularly because you take such good care of your things. Ideal shoes for you are ballet flats, pumps, sneakers, T-strap sandals, loafers, but they'll be simple in style with little embellishment, often neutral, high quality, and nothing trendy about them like an extended toe box, a funky heel shape, or a weird vamp. So if you have any questions about this minimal classic style, go ahead and put them in the comment section so that um, I can answer them for you because I really want you to understand what minimal classic style means. And if this feels and sounds right, if it's like I'm reading your closet, reading your outfits, reading your mind, that's a really good sign that minimal classic style is perfect for you. So let's talk about makeup. Your makeup preferences are simple and elegant. Truthfully, you may not actually like makeup, but if you do, you might love a bold lip color or a neutral. For every day, you'll prefer either a natural neutral look or a more bold look. You may love to um, pair a neutral eye with a bold lip, which is what you almost always see me in. Um, sometimes I'll do a neutral eye and a neutral lip. It really depends on my mood. I rarely do both unless uh, I'm going out, like it's a special occasion. Hairstyles need to be out of your face, fuss-free, smooth, sleek, and shiny. And even your ponytail will be sleek and smooth. You probably don't do messy top knots um, or those I just rolled out of bed hairstyles. You like a defined hairstyle. It will probably have blunt cuts somewhere on your head, whether it's in your bangs or in the length of your hair. So you might be thinking, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Where's the personality here? This sounds kind of boring. And one of the biggest struggles for a classic style woman is it is practically perfect something is missing. It's just not quite there. And it can also come across as old, dated, frumpy, stodgy, and boring if you're not careful. So I did write a post about how to dress classic without looking dated, and we'll talk about that another day. But if you feel mostly classic, but something is missing, that's where these other classic style twists come in. Some women really, truly prefer a purely classic wardrobe and it feels absolutely perfect for them. But if yours is practically perfect, you might be minimal classic at your core, but you need to add another twist or two or three a little bit of those details that will make it really perfect for you. Not too much because that's too much. Your foundation is still minimal classic. It's all about balance. You might need just a little triangle stud and that's um, earring and that's all the edginess you need to show. A neat structured bow on your ballet flat or your purse might be all the cute your classic wants. The trick is to pick and choose one or two small and simple details to add in, and it might only feel right on certain days. If it feels false, costumey, silly, then you've gone too far with the extra details. You might have the wrong twist added in, and if you take it off and feel some relief, then you know that wasn't the right thing for you. You might be happiest in strictly minimal classic style, 
And if you are, then that is perfect for you. But if it just is almost mm, something, then you might need to add some twists. Only you will know the perfect balance. Do you feel silly? Do you feel aggressive in what you're wearing? Is the drape too distracting? Would you rather read a book than go on a hike? Start with one detail, add it to your outfit from another twist, and then see if you want more or see if that feels wrong. Some women feel better adding in more, some can only take so much, and some don't want or need any at all. It's very personal and it can also vary from day to day. So I've written a whole blog post about these classic style twists and there are examples of um, minimal classic outfits. I'm going to show you um, a few of them because we're running short on time, but you'll be able to see all of these here. The biggest misconception about minimal classic style is that it's boring when in fact, most women in the world aspire to it. It's what the French classics of uh, the French style aesthetic is all about and what the, um, the fashion world is based on. And when you talk about fashion icons, icons, not the ones that come and go from year to year or moment to moment, they are the ones who dress in classic style. Audrey Hepburn, Jackie Onassis, Jackie Kennedy. Yes, I realize that they are in fact one person, but they were actually two women. Uh, Jackie Kennedy died when her husband did and Jackie Onassis was born. Um, and I wrote a whole blog post about that, but their styles were very different, um, but they were still very classic. Grace Kelly, Amal Clooney, Victoria Beckham, they all represent that classic wardrobe aesthetic. And some of them, um, I mean, they're from the 50s, the 60s, and we still look back at their style and we try to replicate it, imitate it, repeat it because it is classic. It's timeless. These are the things that we, they wore and we didn't think they were boring, did we? Because it suited them. So I want to show you a few um, outfits. These are all neutral, all of them. And I want to show you why they're so interesting um, and why they work. So the first outfit on the left, she's wearing a white t-shirt, black jeans, black accessories. And that sounds like it'd be a total snoozer. And yet she looks so casually polished, stylish and sophisticated, but why? Well, first of all, the fit of her clothes is impeccable. Second, she has on four simple accessories, two thin bracelets, a belt and a bag. All of them are very simple on their own and two of them are actually functional but they add dimension to her outfit without being too fussy. The black bag is simple in color and design, but the structure of it is beautiful. It's also shiny and it matches the sheen of her loafers, which have a tassel detail on them. Finally, she has that sweater casually, but coolly draped around her shoulders. And it's a layer, but it's still functional and it's not getting in her way. If it gets cold, she can throw it on. If it gets warm, she can pull it off and just wrap it around her shoulders again. The middle outfit, she's wearing a white, black, and dark denim as her neutrals. The oversized menswear shirt is crisp and structured and starched. You'll notice how it holds its own shape. She has accessorized with a simple black crossbody bag, earrings and loafers with the metal horse bit detail. Her turned up cuff is also acting as a point of interest. And even though the shirt looks like she borrowed it from her boyfriend, I guarantee you it's a woman's shirt and it was designed to fit a woman perfectly while suggesting that it came from a man's closet. A lot of classic style clothing are inspired by menswear, button up shirts, loafers, trousers, 
Um, and they have a little bit of a masculine feel to them, but they're always paired in a way that adds some femininity to it. In outfit number three, she's again wearing all black and white and she's accessorized with sunglasses, um, a purse with a strap, a chain strap, and a jacket that she's tossed casually over her shoulder as she strolls down the street, uh, <laughs> like no one's taking her picture. And despite being the same color, her patent loafers add contrast with her pants. The texture of her sweater, the red lip, and the patent loafers add additional dimension, and the fit is spot on. So let's look quickly at three more examples. Again, all neutral outfits. The first outfit, she's wearing four neutrals. She has white, navy, denim, and cognac. There's a subtle pattern in her tortoise glasses, and her accessories include sunglasses, stud earrings, two delicate bracelets, a belt, and a bag, and they all together make this stand out. She has also neatly rolled her jacket sleeves, and even though the destroyed jeans are an edgy classic detail, we're going to ignore those because even if they weren't there, this outfit still has plenty going on to make this an otherwise perfect classic outfit. In outfit number two, she's um, taken black and white to make it more office appropriate with the white trousers, a black top coat, I mean a black top, a coat, and heels. You can make this casual by swapping in jeans and flats um, and it would be a perfect casual outfit. Her only accessories are the sunglasses and the purse and she does, it looks like she has maybe a red lip on. She has the jacket layer and the contrast between her shoes and pant color and the hardware on her bag are adding extra dimension. And in the last outfit, we have a basic white t-shirt and dark wash jeans, but they get a dose of interesting from the cognac flats, a simple medallion pendant necklace, a plain wedding band, sunglasses, a hat, and her red lip color. And if you notice, she's got a tousled um, kind of uh, beachy curly hair, but look at the and the ends it's it's still blunt so she's got this um, curly look going but her hair is still structured <laughs> um and it's still that underlying classic hairstyle element okay we'll do three more and then these will be the last examples these have a little bit of pattern in them so outfit number one is the most complex outfit I chose. She's layered a striped button up under a white textured sweater. She has on four chunky bracelets and a watch paired with rolled sleeves. Her shiny black bag is structured and I'm going to assume it's the same as her shoes because we can't see them. And all of this interest, because that's kind of a lot going on for a classic, a minimal classic outfit. She's balanced it with simple black pants and a tailored fit. And I'm going to assume black shoes. Um, add a pair of sunglasses and she has an outstanding classic outfit. In the middle, we have black and tan are the only colors in this outfit. She has her classic Breton striped tee, a classic trench coat as a layer, sunglasses. Um, there are some zipper pocket details, which are a little edgy. Um, and the bag to bring interest to her black pixie pants and, and ballet flats. And this is an outfit that we've seen on Audrey Hepburn. We've seen on Jackie Onassis. All of the, all of the style greats have worn some variation of this outfit. And then finally, um, black and dark denim are the only colors in this last outfit. It looks like she's wearing probably a black turtleneck sweater paired with dark wash jeans. She cuffed her pants, which adds some interest. The gold buttons and the coat also add some flavor. 
the sheen of her black Chelsea boots um, contrast with the, the color of her cuffed jeans. And she finishes her outfit with the requisite, you can't see me, sunglasses. So I want to know, do these minimal classic outfits bore you or do they inspire you? Are you dying to spice them up or put them on? Um, if you're looking for a little something more, you might need a classic style twist, which, um, you know, you might need a little, you might need a lot, or this just might be the, definitely the wrong style for you. And that is okay. It does, it's not for everyone. And that's, you know, we're all different and that's what makes life interesting and fun. So, um, the big announcement is next week we are starting the shop your closet challenge, but that's not the most exciting part. I know you love it. You all, you always get super excited when we start the shop your closet challenge, but we're doing it something different this time. We're doing a five day challenge next week. The first outfit will be uh, released on Monday to wear um, Sunday to wear on Monday. We're doing it Monday through Friday. And we are doing the style twist challenge for spring 2021. So uh, you'll wear the shop your closet challenge outfit. You're still going to shop your closet. This is not about going out and buying new things, but you're going to experiment and try adding some classic style twists to it. Try, maybe you already know your classic style twist. If you don't, this is a great time to play around with some of these style twist details and see what feels good to you. So again, you're still shopping your closet. I'll still give you the inspiration outfits, um, but this is a way to help. We're gonna get started trying to help you find your signature style like we've been talking about. And each day this week, we're going to talk about one of the classic style twists leading up to that. So I wanted to do these explanations this week, talk about them, answer your questions so that next week when we get started on this challenge, you've got a foundation, you're ready to go, you're ready to try it out. We will be doing a $100 uh, Kendra Scott gift card giveaway for those who participate, just like we did uh, last time. That was so much fun. So um, here's how it works. You'll sign up to be entered in the giveaway. You need to sign up for the challenge and we'll add the link here at stunningstyle.com forward slash twist. And after you join the challenge, if you're not already a member of the capsule wardrobes for classic style Facebook group, join that because that's where it's happening. And the reason for that is because we can share our outfits in a private space. When you post in one of my groups, it's private. It does not show up in your Facebook feed for anybody that doesn't, only people who are in the group can see it. When you post on my Facebook page, that's public. Anybody can see that in the group, anything you share is private. And so we're doing it in the group. We're sharing our outfits there. And if you've registered to enter, Every time you share, every time you share an outfit, you're entered to win the gift card. After you join the group, um, if you haven't already, you can take the newly updated classic style twist quiz. Um, it's a fun quiz. I I did some changes to. I've had it for a few years. Um, it's, uh, but I updated it last week, and a lot of you said that it was more accurate and easier to use. Um, you'll get the best results if you pick what you would wear in an ideal perfect world. D don't think about where you live. Don't think about your age. Don't think about what you do for a living. Don't think about whether you have kids. Uh, it doesn't matter if it rains all the time where you live. It doesn't matter. Um, none of it matters. If you could just magic yourself into a world where you could wear if wearing like for me, it would be if professional wear worked with my life as a stay at home mom. If, if dressing like a CEO was what I needed to do, put on to do the dishes and drive my kids around, you know, I have bad feet. Uh, shoes are hard for me, but we're going to forget about that. 
what would I choose if my feet weren't a problem? Like if I could, if I could wear any shoes and be totally comfortable all day, what shoes would I pick just because I like how they look like just because they're fabulous for me and um, answering the questions with getting rid of, you know, the things that you're like, well, that's what I love, but I can't wear that because I'm going to pick this. Don't do that answer how you would wear, what you would wear in a perfect world, and then see what your results come back as. And um, make sure you save your answers with a screenshot of the results page, because I, I don't have them. I can't, like if you take the quiz and then you go away, I don't, I don't have any way of keeping them or tracking them. Um, so then next Sunday on February 21st, um, look in the Facebook group announcements for the next day's outfit we'll post them at 3 p.m. the day before so that you have time to shop your closet and get prepared for the next day. And then each day we'll wear one of those outfits and you will incorporate your classic style twist to see, you know, how you feel. Do you love it? Does it feel great? And then on Monday, March 1st, uh, two weeks from now, I will announce the winner at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So this is going to be a lot of fun and it's a twist. See what I did there on our, our shopper closet challenge that we've been doing. And I'm excited about it. It's going to be, it's going to be good. So let's take a look at the comments. Renee says, hello. Hi, Renee. Chris says, hi. So glad I could make it going to tune in for minimal and cute twists since I am so close in the quiz. You know, I encourage you to tune in for all of them because you might be surprised. You might hear something and go, I do love that. Maybe I have a little bit of soft in me and I never associated that with soft, you know, because you, you're not just one thing. You might have all five, a little bit of them. You might have three, you might have two, but finding that perfect mix is what will help you dial in your signature style, bringing in the right amounts of these different twist elements is how you go from feeling practically perfect to, I was born to wear this. And I can tell you, it feels so good. A Facebook user says, glad to see this. I am overwhelmingly minimal twist in both the former and the new quiz. Well, I hope this was helpful for you then. I'd love to know what your biggest takeaway from this was. Cynthia says, truth. I'm a mathematician and I am a minimal classic. I can see that. Although I am the anti-mathematician, math is my enemy and I'm a minimal classic. So there's that. Um, a Facebook user says, I have always called it elegant simplicity. I love that. That's, yes, it's very, yeah, elegant simplicity. That's awesome. A perfect cut silhouette and tailoring keep it from being boring. Absolutely. It is an accessory, your biggest accessory. Uh, one of you says, so true. Another person says, yes, that is exactly me. That's me to a T. Janet says, this is definitely me. Um, uh, someone else says, I have a black sheath dress from years ago. Still looks good. I totally believe it. I have, I have wardrobe items that I've owned for 20 plus years. And they, you would never know. You would never know that I didn't buy them yesterday. A sheath dress. I mean, how much more classic does it get? It doesn't. Mirka, thank you for putting your name. My style is mostly minimal with some edgy and a bit of cute. I think I have quite a good idea of minimal, but struggle with edgy in warmer seasons. Oh, amen. It, summer is the hardest to dress edgy. Therefore, I've been thinking of choosing edgy for the style steps, or should I choose my main twist instead? That is minimal. So Mirka, we'll talk about that in the Stunning Style Society um, once we get into the spring season, because um, that's a question a lot of you have. <clears throat> this is Karen. Hi, Karen. Thanks for putting your name. Minimal is definitely me. Carol says, this is me. I love black, but it doesn't like me anymore. So for me, it's navy or gray. Um, well, that's the great thing. You have options for neutrals, right? It doesn't have to be black. It's whatever one feels and looks best on you. 
Leslie says, this description is exactly how I like my outfits. I love solid colors, so basic that I don't have to think about it. So I was telling my husband last night, um, I was talking to a friend of mine and, oh, how did it even come up? I, I asked her, I was like, do you think I would really wear this? Or no, we were talking about why there's something in my closet I haven't worn in two winters, even though. I used to wear something nearly like it when I was in college. And so I was like, I don't know why I'm not wearing it now when it used to be one of my favorite things to wear then. And she said, maybe you were more lighthearted in college. And I was like, <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wear more color now than I did and than I ever have in college. Most of my wardrobe was black, white, navy, dark wash denim, and gray. And I didn't even realize it until a roommate of mine pointed it out because I've always kept my closet sectionalized and colorized. And she came into my room one day and she goes, you don't ever wear color. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I do. And she's like, look at your closet. It's all black, white, and blue and gray. You don't have anything, you don't have any color in there. And I had never thought about it. And so do you know what I did? I went out and bought one red shirt, one yellow shirt, one green shirt, one purple shirt, and one orange shirt. <laughs> it never occurred to me that I didn't have colors. So I went out and bought one of each. Yeah, that's minimal classic. Um, a Facebook user says, I'm a summer, so I tend to use navy as my foundation color over black. Yeah. Or you might love the wheat in that whole wheat color family, too. Um, a scarf is the most I do in a pattern. Yeah. I, I can't wear pattern pants. That's too much pattern for me. I can't do it. I take them off every time, even shorts. I can wear a pattern skirt, but I don't, I don't wear a lot of patterns. Sometimes I really want it, but usually almost all my clothes are solid colors and solid neutrals. Nancy says, put clothes on and never think about them again. That's my goal. That's a minimal classic mentality. Like for me, discomfort is noticing my clothes. And that might mean itching. That might mean it's swaying and swishing. That might mean um, tugging at a neckline because it's showing my bra strap. That's uncomfortable to me. It is not causing me physical discomfort that my bra strap is showing. It's causing me mental discomfort that I'm having to redirect my attention to fussing and fooling with my clothes. Cannot tolerate it. Cannot. No. Teresa says, I love plaid, but mostly like solid colors. Yeah. Chris says, I cut down on a lot of black and tend toward gray and burgundy as neutral since my hair has gone gray. You often see me in these colors as staples. My wardrobe really consists of well-cut tees, neutral ankle pants, and jeans. My pops of color come from color in shoes, necklaces, and purses. Mine too. And jackets. Sometimes, sometimes I'll, I'll add my color in, in a layer because I can take it off whenever I want to. Facebook user says yes to all of these. Welcome to the club. We're glad to have you. Uh, someone else says I like suiting fabric with a small tonal plaid check or tweed that reads solid from a few steps away, but has a fine line or a dot of color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you might like a a uh, tone on tone glam plaid or window pane or a ch uh, pinstripe instead of a chalk stripe. And those little flecks in a tweed. That's beautiful. Ellie says, I miss my work wardrobe every day. My current messy lifestyle is just incongruous to my dressy soul. You and me both. I told my husband I might need to go get a job as a CEO just because I want to wear the clothes. <laughs> I don't want to do the work of a CEO. I just want the wardrobe. Uh, jewelry comments are spot on. I wear my pearl studs every day. 
perfectly classic. Kathy says, LOL, have tons of bracelets, but only wear a classic watch. Catherine, you and you both. I keep buying them because I love the idea. Well, I have this one, um, but it fits my wrist and it, it stays put and it's small and I wear it every day. But other bracelets, mm -mm. no. Uh, Chris says, oh, that sunglass image is so me. Oh, yeah. I wear my sunglasses at night, y'all. <laughs> Inside, outside, daytime, nighttime. Any excuse to put my sunglasses on and, and go invisible, I'm in. The Amelie says, yes, on the sunglasses. Karen says, I love patent leather purses or shoes. I love, I love sheen on my leather. Sometimes I like patent, but I definitely want sheen like well you can't really see any of them from here but all of my leather bags have some kind of sheen to them so yeah i don't mm -mm, i don't like dull but i don't usually go for patent but some do emily says yes on the structure bag i just cannot handle a floppy drooping bag oh i know please, would you please stand up did your mom not teach you to stand up straight bag what is wrong with you get off the ground it's not nap time oh it makes me nuts nuts i cannot i cannot with the droopy bag oh. this is me carol to a t well isn't it nice to feel to hear like to have it laid out like this it it's so, um, I, I've gotten so many comments and, and emails and messages that it was just so uh, validating and helpful to, um, to read about it in this way and to have it laid out for you like this. Um, and just to be validated in some way, you know, that it's not, there's nothing wrong with you because you love boring stuff. And that it can be beautiful. You d perfectly described me and my closet. Well, I promise I have not been spying on you. I just described my closet and it sounds like we're closet twinsies. Another Facebook user says me too. I love structured bags. Denise says the description is almost me. Well, Denise, it sounds like you need a classic style twist or two or three thrown in there to find your signature style and make it perfectly you. A Facebook user says, yes, neutral eye and red or plum lip are my favorite. Mine too. Um, Patty says, is comfort important to minimal style? So I kind of talked about what comfort means to a minimal classic. It, I mean, if it's itchy, that is uncomfortable, but it's more uncomfortable because it's you're noticing something else about your clothes. Like, I don't want to notice my clothes. Um, I don't want to think about them. So are there things that itch me? Yeah. And I don't wear them because that's uncomfortable. I have a thing about sock seams. That is uncomfortable to me because it rubs on my little toe between my toe and my boot. That's uncomfortable. And so I don't wear it. But comfort also means... I don't want to notice you like tugging at your, or if you're, if it's falling too low and you keep having to do this, or if you have to pull your shirt down like this or hit your pants up over and over again, mm -mm, that's uncomfortable in a different way. Leslie says, I used to wear blazers a lot, but now I'm home. Mostly I don't wear them. How does a jean jacket fit in? So I love jean jackets. I like if they're tailored and fit. I don't do the boxy oversized sloppy jean jacket. I like it to be tailored, fitted. I like it to have some stretch in it so I can move. And I like it to be dark with the classic gold stitching. That's classic. And so I love them, but that doesn't mean you have to. You don't have to love every single Thing that is classic and that is something that was so important that I finally learned I kept wearing polka dots because I love classic style and polka dots are classic so I have to like polka dots and then I hate polka dots they're not me 
So there can be classic style things that you don't like. And that's part of what makes it unique to you, your version of classic style. Mm. Oh, and so I hate blazers. I kept trying to wear them. And I finally was like, I don't like this. <laughs> I'm going to stop trying. So, but they're very classic and a lot of minimal classic style women love them, but I don't. Karen says, I've had the same bob haircut for 30 years. Longer or shorter is the only variation for me. I still love it. Yeah. I go between a bob and a pixie, some or an A-line, which is still just a bob. But yeah, I'm with you. It's what I like. I also have a blunt cut bob. Ignore the profile pic. It's my sweet mom. Yeah, it, it feels good to us. It would feel awful to someone else because it's not for them. Kim says, I'm definitely not a minimal. I don't like neutrals and bottoms up. And that's good that you know that because, um, you know, um, enthusiasm is contagious and it's easy to hear me be so enthusiastic about classic style. And then you might be like, well, maybe I should like classic style too. Well, no, you shouldn't. If it's not for you, definitely not. I'm not trying to convince anybody to like classic style um, because if it's not you, then then wear what is perfect for you. So that's good that you know that. Another Facebook user says, minimal classic core, but need other elements to feel me. Can you be minimal and still require a pop of color with sweater shoes, chunky jewelry? Not sure if I should take minimal course and add the elements or take edgy, which might be way too much for me. So I can't see who's asking this, um, but yeah. So the examples that I just showed you are extreme minimal classic. And the purpose was to show you the elements that make classic style so beautiful at a very core level. It doesn't mean you don't wear color or like other things or have other elements of other style twists. And so, like I said to Mirka, we'll discuss that rest of your question in the society as we get into the spring. Um, into the spring wardrobe guide. Grace Kelly, one of you loves that. Jennifer says, love Amal Clooney. She's one of my style book inspirations. Oh, I know. Like, she's so fabulous. <laughs> so fabulous. Kim says, don't think that's me, or at least only as my added twist and not as my main twist. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, another Facebook user says, I love all of these. Well, Good. I hope it's helpful. Kimberly says, I'm a huge Grace Kelly fan. My dominant style twist is minimal classic. It's me to a T. And it was hers too. She's, I mean, she's a style icon for a reason. All the style icons that last, they are all classic style women, classic style clothes. That's the definition of it. It's timeless. And that is why they have stood the test of time. Okay, so I saved forever and got a pair of those loafers. Love them. Are you talking about the Gucci horse bit loafers? If you are, tell me about it. They are gorgeous. They are gorgeous. And Jennifer wants to know too. Amy, Elizabeth, thank you for putting your name, says these classes are going to be great, helping us choose our twist by process of elimination. I'm definitely not a minimalist. Well, I'm so glad. I really want this to be helpful. Um, going through these, um, I think, you know, because the, the, the quiz is imperfect, right? It's meant to be fun. Um, it's meant to be helpful, but it's imperfect. And so, you know, if you take the quiz and you're like, no, then go with no. <laughs> Don't stop and go, well, maybe I'm wrong about what I like. No, you're not. Go with no. Um, but hearing these can either solidify like, oh yeah, that was dead on for me. Or it can make you go, actually, no, I like that more. Or it can make you go, this just isn't for me at all. So that's why we're doing this this week to help you prepare for the, the, um, style twist challenge next week 
so that you're not like frantically trying to figure out why well, do I know what this twist is or, or what does that look like? We're talking about each one, one a day this week so that you have time to mentally process this. Love them all. Chris says, the middle is my ideal. The long black coat with white pants is so chic. It is so chic. Uh, someone else says, love all these examples. Well, I'm glad. Emily says, I have discovered loafers this past year and I love them. Kate Middleton is my classic style icon. I love that English, classic English style. Again, she's classic. I love loafers too, but I have learned with the classic style twists that I have very specific likes and dislikes in my loafers. I don't love all loafers. I'm very particular about the details in the loafers. So even though the loafers are classic, I have to have a specific version of these loafers to love them. So the Gucci Brixton loafer is not me. I love them. I love looking at them on other people, but they don't have the details that I personally need. I need some edgy and that doesn't do it for me. Someone likes the middle one of the second group. Yes. The proportions on the middle are great. Yes. And that's another thing that really adds to it. Chris says number two again, I think I have this on my Pinterest page. You and probably half the world because it's so beautiful. Amy says don't minimalists wear color. They do wear color. I just wanted to show you these examples um, as very bare minimum, how minimal classic style gets uh, its interest without adding in the extras like color and a lot. Like I wanted to show it to you on a very basic level, what it looks like. So, um, Mm, I don't think I have any of those pictures open, but yes, you, you definitely can wear color. You're just not likely to wear a ton of it. So today I'm wearing a green sweater, but I'm wearing dark wash jeans and cognac boots. Or I love to wear neutrals with a pop of color in my shoes or my bag or my jacket or my jewelry. Um, it's, I do occasionally wear head to toe color. It's not often and I'll retreat to neutrals for days after. So yes, they do. They just don't wear that much color that often. They're more selective to it. Um, someone says agree on two. I like a good Breton tea. I know they're, they're, they're super classic. So someone says number three looks edgy to me. Um, I'm looking at the three. So this was once we had gotten to the third set and, um, I don't see any edgy details on Victoria Beckham's outfit. This one on the left, the white sweater does have some edgy details, those substantial uh, heavy bracelets, the texture in the sweater, just the combination of that, that does have some edginess to it, but maybe we're talking about, maybe that's the one you're talking about because this one on the right, I don't, I don't see any edgy details, but this one on the left, um, everything is more substantial and that is more edgy. And we're going to talk about that on Wednesday, but none of these have any overtly edgy elements. Inspired. I love them all. Good. Then that means you're in the right place. Chris says agreed. Someone else says they inspire me. Linda says, I identify with almost everything you're saying about minimal classic. It's me, but I need the extra twist. I'm excited to learn how to do this. I'm so glad because I do too. Minimal classic was practically perfect for me. And that's what would lead me to deviate because I was like, oh, I just feel a little too, mm, not yet, right? And adding a little bit of that edgy is exactly what I need. And so today, what am I wearing that's edgy? I've got these stabby earrings and we're gonna talk about the edgy details on 
Wednesday, but I'm not wearing a ton. You've got these angular stabby details in my earrings. There are tiny studs on the sole of my boots, but they're not super noticeable. You have to get close to see them. And that's, that's all the edgy I need today. Other days I wear more and need more, but I need this little bit of stabbiness to be me. Carolyn here, love these, although I need a bit of a twist. A lot of us do. And that's what makes it unique to you. Emily says, I would wear every one of these outfits exactly as is. I love them. Well, I'm glad you got inspiration from this. So, you know, I want, I hope you'll join us in this um, style twist challenge next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope you'll join me every day this week for these uh, uh, classic style twist lives, because I think you'll get a lot from them. Um, you may just find your perfect recipe and then next week it'll make the challenge so much more fun. And if you miss them, um, I know not everyone can be here in the middle of the day. We will be sending out an email each day with a link back to this and the post so you can read it. And um, so if you're not on my email list, you definitely want to be on that. And when you join the challenge, you'll be on my email list. So you'll get these emails. Patty says, I want to wear most just as is. Some I would not wear like layered stripe blouse with the white sweater. I'm favoring minimal classic and it's such a relief. Yeah, so for some minimal classics, layering that sweater and that button up, I'd just be like, uh, no. Mm -mm. Can't, won't, shan't. Um, and it is a relief. When it's truly for you, it's a relief to put it on or rather take all the extra off. Wendy says, minimal soft classic here. I love all these outfits. They look perfect to me. Not boring at all. The last photo on the left actually has too much pattern for me. Mm -hmm. That's the most like out there minimal classic outfit that I put on there. Patty says, my favorite loafers have pointed toes. Mine too. I have to have the pointed toe. Plus it was a lot of jewelry. I think you're talking about the the one with the white sweater. She was wearing a lot of jewelry. I couldn't wear those bracelets. Never. I mean, maybe for Halloween. I have for a Halloween costume, but I was in a costume, right? I wasn't being me. I have both pointed and traditional. My whole closet is ballet flats and loafers with one pair of black pumps. Oh, I have way too many pumps. Pointed toe flats and loafers for me too and boots. Yeah, I'm with you. Denise says, I love all the outfits shown. Do you love them for you or do you love admiring them on others? Because a lot of people love the classic style aesthetic, but it's really not them, but it's so appealing and attractive. They want to love it. My sister-in-law is one of those people. She loves how it looks. She's so, she admires it, but it does not feel good to her on. And that frustrates her because she wants to wear it, but it, it's not her. Um, but recognizing that has been a big thing for her. Uh, Denise says she won't be able to do a challenge because she'll be on a ski trip. Well, I'm having a hard time feeling sorry for you, Denise, to be totally honest. But um, you'll still be able to find the outfits in the group and you can do them the week after. But I mean really you're going skiing. So Teresa says, this is perfect advice. Um, are you picking, picking your dream shoes with bunion feet? Thanks April. You're welcome, Teresa, because, um, the shoes that I want to wear and the shoes that I can wear are not the same, but for the quiz, we need to forget about the fact that my feet hurt in shoes in general. Facebook user says, I'm glad I did this. It has made it even more obvious that I am minimal with no additional twist. And you may have no additional twist. I hope you'll still uh, listen to the rest of them because you might be surprised at what little details you might be incorporating or missing. And I mean little that might make you just take it from so good to I will be buried in this, you know. So um, I hope you'll join me. 
I struggle with the quiz because some just categories I dislike all the options. Well, that's possible. Like I said, the quiz is imperfect and you are a unique individual. And so finding things that every single person can relate to is not going to happen. <laughs> I can't, you know, because we're all, we are all unique. So um, these were just general, trying to find the general thing. It's also possible that you're not minimal classic and that's okay too. So um, Gloria says, I love your chats, adore the outfit that was described as too much, but it's exactly what I would love to wear. So are you talking about the white sweater one? Well, Gloria, that's got some edgy in it and that's why you like it <laughs> because you've got some edgy and that makes the minimal classic perfect for you when you add that edgy in. Sue from the UK, very minimal. Everything you said is me. Well, Sue, I hope this was helpful then. Vivian says, yes, but I like pattern mixing occasionally. I do too. Occasionally. It depends on the patterns and the quantity of it. And I can't do it every day. So this post was talking about the minimalist of minimals. And it doesn't mean you have to love or loathe every single thing that I listed. These are all generalities. And you might be like, yeah, no, but to everything else, yes. So I don't, I don't like blazers. And they're very minimal classic, you know? So um, yeah, you can like mixing patterns occasionally and still be minimal classic. Gloria says, and sometimes I like three of the options. That's okay too. That's what makes it perfectly you. Gloria says, have you worn those new tops in all those colors yet? So that was when I was in college and no, I didn't wear them. Mm -mm. I stuck to my neutrals, partly because I didn't pick the right styles of tops. I just, I just wanted to find a top in each color just to prove my roommate wrong. Um, but I, I do wear colors now, you know, not yellow, but the other ones. Yeah. Patty says, great example, pulling and fussing. I, yeah. I'm glad that helped. Bonnie says, I feel at home in minimal classic from a young age. Navy has been a favorite color. I do find I like a mixture of other twists, like soft or sporty. Yeah. And that is what will make it perfect for you. And that is where your signature style will come from. Another Facebook user says, this was super helpful. I'm so glad. So join me for the rest of them this week because they will be really helpful too. It just, if for, even if it's not your twist, learning what those other ones are, you know what to avoid. I'm not cute classic. Nothing cute about me. Knowing what the cute classic details are means I will not inadvertently buy something with a cute classic detail and then it'll sit in my closet. And I'm like, why don't I like you? Well, because I know what not to buy. Marion says problem finding sunglasses to wear over my regular glasses. That is a huge challenge. I know. And that would be something that would make me crazy. I might get, pres I, I would probably get prescription sunglasses personally. Sue says sock seams are one of my things. Oh, I know. I just, something about the shape of my foot, no matter how carefully I put on my sock, that seam works its way over to sit right on the outside of my little toe in just the worst spot and rub, only on one foot. Yes, agree about not having to love everything. I hate trenches on me. Yeah, you're allowed to hate trench coats. I realized I only like single breasted trench coats. I don't like double breasted trench coats, even though they're so classic. You don't have to like them at all. Marion says the spring style challenge will allow for us who live in colder climates. Polar vortex has finally left. Well, I'm glad the vortex is gone, but that's part of the shop your closet challenge is you uh, adapt it to fit your anything, your closet, your style twist, your climate, because spring is like, it looks different from neighborhood to neighborhood, much less 
country to country. So, you know, part of the challenge is to make it work for your climate as well. So it, it will work for anybody who wants to participate. Nancy says, can everyone see all the comments that April's reading? I only see some of them. Nancy, that's a good question. So this gets broadcast into my page, my YouTube channel, and into some of my groups. And I can see the comments coming from every place. You'll only be able to see the comments wherever you're viewing them. So if you're viewing it on my page, you'll only see the comments from my page. If you're viewing it in one of my groups, you'll only see the comments from that group. And if you're viewing it on my YouTube channel, you'll see the comments there. Were you feeling crazy? <laughs> you're not crazy. Um, Someone else says, this sounds perfect. Still learning. I looked at the shopping portal and pulled up each style individually. Thought I was a sporty, but I love the soft and cute items more than the sporty. Looking at my picks, I wear more sporty. So a lot of people who wear more sporty, it's because their lifestyle requires it, right? So when I had a bunch of little, little kids, I needed sporty stuff. I go on a field trip with them. I'm not wearing wedges, right? Um, I needed to be able to move. I needed that utility. Um, so that's a common thing that a lot of people, women dress more sporty than they are because they need it, but you can still be, and that's actually a topic we're covering next year or this year is how to dress sporty without looking sporty when your lifestyle calls for it. That's not a very elegant title. I'll come up with a better one by the time we do that one, but, um, you might be wearing it because it's what your lifestyle dictates. Yes, it's the Gucci ones. Oh, I've heard they're like butter, like just all oh, melted on your feet and then you float in them. I just, they're not my style, but I like to look at them. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy you love them. Gloria says, it's amazing that I can identify with a classic style. I thought only fancy dressers were classic. You are teaching me so much and really opening my eyes and possibilities. Well, we just look fancy, right? Because of all the things we talked about. I mean, it can be very fancy, but just in a t-shirt and jeans, you look fancy because of the elements of minimal classic style. And it's for everyone who loves it. Another Facebook user says, my style twists are minimal than soft. My problem is that soft so easily turns into frumpy on me. That is a common problem for you, soft, minimal classics. And learning the perfect balance and exactly which details um, are the ones you want to incorporate is, is critical. And so if you're feeling frumpy, you've gone too far into soft and you need to dial it back into the minimal. We're going to be talking about soft on Thursday. Debbie says, what is the difference between, hold on, minimal classic adding edgy details and edgy classic? That's what edgy classic is. It's the same thing. So edgy is like it's a whole, whole own thing. You can just be edgy, straight up edgy. Edgy classic is when you're minimal classic and you add some edgy details. Robin says, would your new necklace be edgy? If not, where does it fall? So that's a good question. It can be. It is more, um, it is a minimal because it's faceted, angular, um, like horizontally angular. You know what I mean? It's got uh, planes to it. P-L-A-N-E-S, planes. Um, but there are items that you can take one direction or another, depending on how you pair them and what you pair them with. So the way I wear this necklace, it will come across as edgier because I'm pairing it with stabbier jewelry. Does that make sense? And it could also be more minimal. If I took these earrings out and just put in a simple pair of diamond studs, you wouldn't look at this necklace and go, ooh, you're edgy. Um, does that make sense? So there are items that kind of uh, sit on the border and what you put them with makes them this or that. Uh, so if you, 
if you think about flour in a recipe, um, you can take flour and add sugar to it and it's sweet and flour and add salt to it and it's savory, um, but you cannot uh, make sardines sweet. I mean, you could, but that's nasty, right? So it's, it's like flour. It comes across as edgier because of how I wear it, but it's on its own, I would call it more minimal, personally. Dropped in late, but I will watch the recording. Good, good. We've been we've been chit chatting a lot. There's a lot of Q and A on this one, um, but the main part of it is not as long. I can't see all she sees. I'm not sure what that means. Kim says I loved the one with the white sweater and the one with the white trousers with the black coat, but I would need to add some color. Yeah, and that's you. Any you may want to. You don't have to not wear color. These were just very minimal, minimal examples to show you the foundation of it. You, I, yeah, even on my minimal, well, on my most minimal days, I don't wear any color, but um, I wear color. You can wear color and be minimal. Just, I was trying to demonstrate the elements of minimal classic style without um, adding in extra interest like color and much pattern. You Timeful says it was a big aha moment to realize I could admire clothes styles on others and realize it was okay for me not to wear it. Me too, because I did it for years and it's a very, it's what the fashion industry thrives on. Convincing us to do that. Love it, but need some cuteness. That's what'll make it perfect for you. Diana says, I've always loved the look of button-up shirts, but I've never found one that looks good on. Yeah, it can be one of those things that you're just like, I, I wish I could like it, and, and yet I can't. Um, it could also mean finding the right uh, button-up shirt, and it could also just mean it's not you. So, well, Diana says, I have broad shoulders, a large bust, and a short waist, so I've just abandoned that preppy style. Yeah, that's you would have a very hard time from a fit perspective um, wearing button up shirts. They are not made for your body shape. As we, we talked about this several weeks ago um, and trying to put it on and make it fit and wonder what's wrong with you is an exercise in frustration because there's nothing wrong with you. It's just not a cut of clothing that is made to fit your body shape unless you can get it tailored enough to fit you in the waist you have to buy it to fit your shoulders and bust but if you're busty it'll end up pulling at the buttons here and that's an exercise and frustration like that's discomfort so um i'm not saying it's impossible but i understand why you struggle to find ones that fit you because most of them are not going to fit you correctly and it would probably require a trip to the tailor Gloria says, personality wise, I'm a bit of a mouse. So it's exciting to know that I can be a bit edgy. Well, Gloria, as you start dressing to tell your style story, maybe that mouse is going to disappear because maybe you're only being a mouse because somebody told you you should be. We shall see. Christine says, a little off subject, but will the spring shopping portable portal will be limited to the style twist we choose. No, nope. It'll be the same as it always was. Lynette says, thanks for the detailed info. I love minimal classic style. I'm so glad. So join me for the rest of them because they'll be really helpful. Leslie says, I like some sparkle occasionally and the Madewell loafers. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love the Madewell loafers. I have them in black. And why they cannot make the brown ones look in person like they make them look on the website, I'll never know. Online, they look the perfect color. In person, they're orange. Robin says, the necklace explanation makes sense. And so I think I hear you saying it is minimal at its core. Yes, but it's one of those that could tip either way. So like a plain chain would not look edgy paired with these earrings, you know, because it's just a plain chain. But this one could go 
either way. It will look whatever I pair it with, if that makes sense. Debbie says, are you edgy classic or minimal? If minimal, I'm confused because of your added edgy elements. I am edgy classic. I am primarily minimal classic. I have to have the minimal classic. It has to be the large majority of my outfit. The edgy classic is when I add those edgy details in. So I am minimal classic first. I am edgy classic second and in a small dose. So edgy classic is when you combine the two, but minimal classic is first. Judy says, I actually like pattern and can still dress minimal classic. You can like pattern and be minimal classic. Minimal classic looks different for each of us. Amelie says, minimal can go frumpy on me because of my odd body and minimal is all about fit. Well, first, Amelie, your body is perfect. There's nothing odd about it. It's just your unique body. Um, it's the clothes that are the problem. And you can get that good tailored fit. It just, we have a preconceived notion of what that looks like based on what we see on the runway. So uh, that tailored fit will look different on you, but it can still be a tailored fit on your body. And, um, it can be hard to make that mental shift to what it will look like for each of us because we've been force fed these ideas, right? It's just pounded into us daily. It's all around us. So what tailored looks like on you and what looks like on me and what it looks like on her and her and her will be different. Tailored means skimming, not tight, not squeezing, skimming, skimming your body, not the mannequin's body. Um, and so, uh, yeah, Christine says, can you be mainly minimal classic and switch up the detail twists like edgy one day, soft another? If that's what you love, you can do whatever you want. There's no rules about this. There's no limitations. It's, there's not a, a uh, magic formula that's universal. It's whatever suits you and what you love and what you feel fantastic in. That's all that matters. So there is, um, you know, I, I'm really just kind of too. I never wear cute. I sometimes wear sporty mostly because it's a lifestyle requirement on certain days. Um, and I'm not soft, but how much edgy I need from day to day varies and mixing them and combining more than one. So, you know, I gave the example last week of one of my friends, she's minimal, edgy and cute. She needs all three or just minimal, she feels frumpy. Minimal and edgy, she feels too uh, sharp. Minimal and um, cute, and she feels too sweet. She needs all three because the cute shaves some of the sharp edges off of her edgy, and the edgy uh, adds a little tartness to her sweet. You know what I mean? Um, you may need all five, you know, it, it, it can depend from day to day. You may need more soft one day um, and, and more edgy another. So it, it's totally personal preference. It can be whatever you want it to be, whatever feels good to you. I am minimal classic with an edgy twist. I do have very curly hair, which does not seem to fit my style. How can I wear my curly hair to fit the minimal edgy style? Oh, you're so lucky. You're I have naturally curly hair um, and I go through stages where I wear it naturally curly and stages when I don't like years of it. I wore my naturally curly hair for years in college 
and then I decided to wear it straight. I stopped wearing it because uh, the shorter it is, the harder it is for me to straighten it. In po uh, pixie, no. Um, but it's all about the cut and the shape of it. Um, a little wildness to the curls is what will feel edgy. So not so perfect. You'll want some texture and uh, finding someone who can cut curls is critical. No blunt cuts for you. You'll want some layers and some texturing and some um, just a little bit of wildness to it. Like a little bit like an overgrown rose, climbing rose. Not like maybe you haven't seen a brush in three years, right? But just not so perfect and perfectly in place. And so with my hair, like I don't like it to be perfectly placed. I need some texture in it. I need some movement to it. And I need the curls to not be perfect. Like when I curl it, I need them to not be perfect. And like even, I need them to be uneven. Um, uh, so just getting it, getting a little bit of a wildness to it. So I would, I would uh, go to Pinterest and look at curly, I'm sure you looked at a gazillion curly hairstyles, but look for ones that just look a little dangerous, you know, not so perfect. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Um, yeah, because with, yeah, that's what you need in my opinion. Okay, this was fun. We've been on here for an hour and a half though. This was more like a style banquet <laughs> than a style snack, but this is important and it's a, um, it's a big topic and I wanted to answer your questions. I want this to be helpful so that when we go into this uh, style twist challenge, you're feeling a little more comfortable. You know, I don't, you're definitely not going to know like all the things, right? This is, this is to be fun and experiment a little bit, a little bit. So register for the challenge at stunningstyle.com forward slash twist. It starts, the first outfit will come out on Sunday and then we'll wear it on Monday and share it in the Facebook group. It's going to be fun, fun, fun. If you're new here, the Shopper Closet Challenge is so much fun. It is one of our favorite things that we do each season, and this is a whole new twist. Get it? On the Shopper Closet Challenge that we haven't done before, so this is going to be new territory for everyone, and um, it's, uh, I want you to be prepared for it. So join me for all of them. Just even if you know your twists, then when you hear more about the other ones, you know what to stay away from because that can also be what's throwing you off like it was for me. I was adding cute details, not realizing how cute they were. So I will see you again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time, same bat time, same bat channel, all you DC comic fans. Um, and we will be discussing cute classic tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday and I'll see you tomorrow. I just barely finished. I just barely finished. You were right you were earlier. Not like oh, you. thank you. I haven't finished with my drink yet. So let, can I drink this first and then I'll maybe come up? Okay. We'll have thank you. you. Just, just, just.